Good evening. You're watching Left, Right and Center this Friday night. I'm Nidhi Razdan. On the show this evening, high drama in Lucknow today as one of India's most flamboyant tycoons, Subrata Roy, is arrested following a Supreme Court order. As controversy dogs the Sahara boss, we explore the political corporate nexus. Has Subrata Roy had political Sahara all these years? And has the law finally caught up? Later in the show, author Chetan Bhagat will join us on the new film based on his book, Two States, the story of two people from different parts of India who fall in love and then face the challenge of convincing their families. But first tonight, Subrata Roy will spend the next three days in police custody in Lucknow until his appearance before the Supreme Court on the 4th of March. In what has been a day of much drama, the industrialist surrendered before the police this morning and then urged the Supreme Court for an early hearing of his case. That was rejected. This evening, Mr. Roy told a local court that he wanted to spend the next three days in police custody at home. His lawyers say that is entirely possible since it is up to the local police to decide where to keep him. Well, in fact, Subrata Roy has just left that courtroom just a short while ago. My colleague Anand Sanani now joins us on the phone line from Lucknow with the latest. Anand, do we know where he's being taken? Well, that is something that's not clear. We tried asking the police uh, people who were escorting Mr. Roy out of uh, the court premises and they did not seem to have any answers to that question. They said that we are just taking him away. Uh, it has been left, as you pointed out, entirely to the discretion of the Lucknow police as to where they can keep him. Uh, this also leaves out uh, sufficient room and possibility to actually keep him at his residence in Lucknow at Sahara Shahar, where he wanted to be uh, by his mother's bedside. So that is something that is still within the realm of possibility uh, right now. But as uh, Mr. Subrata Roy was emerging from the court premises, he actually stuck his neck out so that the media could actually see him. He had a smile on his face and uh, clearly, uh, in a sense, also perhaps relieved about the fact that he uh, will not be sent to jail because this was not judicial custody that the Lucknow police had asked for. It was police uh, remand that they wanted to take him on. And, uh, uh, you know, the possibility of him actually going back to his house is also very strong. So perhaps, uh, uh, you know, uh, much of a breather for him in a sort uh, of a sort uh, rather than any sort of uh, punishment for him, so to speak, even after he was arrested uh, in right. the morning. Nidhi? Right, Anand, thanks a lot for that update and, and of course questions then would be raised if he does end up staying at home uh, about the fact that the local administration perhaps was being a little friendly and, and going easy on him given his political connections in the state as well. But let me just go across to my colleague Shweta Rajpal Kohli on, on why this is so important and why this story is our headline tonight. Shweta, he is one of the most flamboyant tycoons as we said right at the beginning but this is a case uh, that has affected a lot of ordinary investors perhaps and, and why one in, in which many say he essentially managed to evade uh, this all this year, all these years, and now the law has caught up. Absolutely, Nidhi. The law finally catching up with Sahara promoter Subroto Roy and the number of people affected that we're talking about. Three crore, that's right, three crore small investors to whom he has to return 24,000 crore rupees. That's the real basis of the entire legal tussle that he and Sebi have been in for many, many years now. But the Supreme Court now clearly uh, losing patience with him and uh, going ahead and ordering his arrest. Of course, uh, he tried to evade that, uh, but when the Local police uh, clearly uh, could not find him. He was termed as absconding and then later he surrendered himself this morning. This case, uh, Nidhi, is very important because it is really uh, something that impacts uh, so many small investors who put in money and SEBI clearly terming that the two financial schemes that Sahara had floated were completely illegal and that's why he needs to return that money to the small investors. On its part, the Sahara group claims that it has already deposited 5,000 crore rupees with SEBI and the remaining amount it has already refunded uh, uh, to the investors. In fact, it had sent uh, 127 truckloads that carried as many as 5 crore documents, Nidhi, to the SEBI headquarters uh, as proof of the fact that it has refunded the money. But SEBI had rejected that claim, saying that uh, most of the investors that they are pointing out are not genuine because when they reached out to those depositors, they did not find their addresses genuine. So that really is the legal tussle. But right now, the Supreme Court extremely upset with the fact that he himself did not appear in court. And now, of course, next Tuesday at 2 p.m. is when he will be produced before the top court. Back to you, Nidhi. All right, Shweta, thanks a lot for that. And let's, in fact, take you through today's developments and some of the background that Shweta was talking about to that case that has led to this high-profile arrest today. Let's take a look. Subrata Roy, one of India's most flamboyant and influential industrialists, will spend the next three days in police custody. 
the supreme court no less ordered his arrest as he failed to appear before it to explain why his company has not refunded the 24000 crore rupees it owes to over 3 crore small investors sahara shri as he likes to be called by his 12 lakh employees surrendered this morning in lucknow but kept the magistrate waiting for over 2 hours before his luxury motorcade left sahara shahar his mansion in lucknow the judge pulled up the lawyers and cops over the delay clearly subrot roy's fall has been as dramatic as his rise his rags to riches story made him a household name in india prompting investors to put in their hard earned savings in two financial schemes the sahara group had floated schemes that were later termed illegal by market regulator sebi that directed him to refund 24000 crores to the investors This became the basis of a major legal tussle between Sebi and the Sahara Group, with a high intense drama leading up to his arrest. Earlier this week, Subrata Roy's lawyer told the Supreme Court that he was unable to appear as he was by the side of his 92-year-old ailing mother, who was in a critical condition. He wrote for the court's benefit, "Nothing is more than mother." But the same day, he apparently attended a wedding in Lucknow, according to photographs that appeared in the local media. When the police failed to arrest him and the media reported that he's absconding, Subrata Roy made another emotional pitch today, saying, "I can't handle this level of agony and humiliation. I'm not the kind of human being who will abscond. A lot of people advised me to get admitted in some hospital as it is the general practice to avoid courts on medical grounds. However, I hate such drama." And then he surrendered. Sahara India Parivar has always put our beloved nation ahead of our business interest and has always ensured compliance of the law of the land across the business and processes shri shubhadroy sahara to me is not only a doting father but also a patriotic son of the soil who has contributed immensely to the country in many ways whenever india needed its son to stand up and shoulder responsibilities today of course we saw that uh, he went ahead and surrendered himself while his son addressed a very emotional press conference here calling subrata roy a doting father and a patriotic son of the soil he even read out a message from his father this is the best honor my country could have given me the sahara group that claims to have a net worth of over 68000 crore rupees once again reiterated that it has refunded all except 2000 crores to investors and that it has given the proof of the refunds to sebi if it hadn't paid there would have been blood bath or suicides across the country sebi rejected the truck loads of documents that sahara had sent as proof of payments saying these were not genuine the supreme court in turn asked sahara to submit title deeds of its properties asking sebi to sell them and refund the money but sahara told the court that properties can't be sold as many of them are under third party rights But now it seems Subrata Roy's larger than life image or his political connections are not helping. He has no choice but to appear before the top court next Tuesday. With Anand Sanani in Lucknow in New Delhi, Shweta Rajpal Kohli, NDTV. So has Sahara Shri as he's called Subrata Roy had a political Sahara all these years joining us on the program tonight Gaurav Bhatia of the Samajwadi Party which is the party with the, whom his political connections are often talked about we have author and commentator and columnist Chetan Bhagat social activist Medha Patkar joining us senior lawyer Dushan Dave joins us this evening from Delhi uh, Shailendra Singh the joint managing director of Percept joins us from Mumbai and senior journalist Sharath Pradhan who knows this story like the back of his hand uh, joins us tonight from Lucknow Sharath I want to go to you first what do you going uh, what do you think is going to happen as far as his custody is concerned because we're hearing there's it, it's entirely possible that he's going to be at home for the next 3 days it is very it's become very obvious you know the day the whole uh, the day's events clearly show that Shah sahara continues to hold clout his clout with the government you know ultimately the police is under control of the state government with which subrata roy has Uh, amazingly close relations and 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 you know the way uh, the, the joke in lucknow today is that uh, they don't know whether it was sahara in the custody of the police or police in the custody of the sahara of sahara you know subrata roy's uh, grand 150 acre private residential estate the police today spent uh, almost uh, i think 8 9 9 or 10 hours there i don't know what they were doing they claim to have taken sahara into custody and claim to have taken him into arrest 
Eventually, they took him to the CJM's court at 5 o'clock in the evening, knowing full well that the, the jail manual does not permit entry of any accused after 5 p.m. There is obviously a design behind presenting him before the CJM after 5 p.m. There, and there is more reason to suspect, you know, then the, the entire media was banned from entering the court. It, not even in the Ayodhya case where Advani and other top BJP leaders were involved, was the media prevented from recording and witnessing whatever was going on inside so the court. So you're saying this was all a farce that was played Today out. the media was kept away. And, and you know, even till this moment, now we do not know, we do not know whether the custody is where the custody is going to be for all you know it is going to be in his own home well that's exactly and once the again, point the that i was raising the police will park itself inside yeah that's the point i was raising i'm going to take that to gaurav bhate of the sp because gaurav immediately then questions are raised on whether the sp government in up is treating mr subroto roy with kid gloves because after all he is very close to mulayam singh yadav i don't think anyone can deny that is is the up police going soft on him Nidhi, it is important uh, to understand, first of all, that what are the orders of the Supreme Court? The orders of the Supreme Court are that a non-bailable warrant has been issued against Mr. Subrotha Roy to ensure that he is produced before the court on 4th March 2014 at 2 p.m. That is what the order says. Now, a lot is being said about the proximity of Mr. Subroto Roy with the government and with some authority I would say <laughs> that the government is uh, duty bound under the constitution and under various statutes to act in a fair manner and they have to abide by the order passed by the Supreme Court. After the order was passed, I think the conduct of the police itself would show that the police took adequate action. In fact, the police went to immediately search for him once they got a copy of the order of the Supreme Court. After that, because Mr. Subroto Roy did not resist arrest, there was no reason why they, the police should have uh, resorted to extreme measures. And after that, as per CRPC, he was to be produced before the magistrate, which the police did. In fact, the SO of the Gomti Nagar police station moved an application before the court when Mr. Subroto Roy was being produced. Now, reading too much into all this would be very unfair. I think, yes, Mr. Subroto Roy is not entitled to any VIP treatment, but at the same time, he cannot be deprived of any constitutional rights which would be available to an ordinary citizen. And, and, and does so he have I a right think, to then know, spend the next three days at home? Gaurav, you're a lawyer as well. I'm just asking you. I'm not a lawyer. But I'm just trying to understand this. That then would then uh, one of those constitutional rights be the right to spend the next three days at home? Because he actually told the judge in Lucknow, when the judge asked where would you like to be for the next three days, he would say at home, which is lovely, of course. But we just want to know whether that is a possibility. See, Nidhi, I would say this, that... Now, since a request was made, and I have just learned from the media sources that he, his police custody has been allowed. What this means is that uh, without seeing the order, I cannot categorically state what the magistrate has allowed and what he hasn't allowed. But then at least I can tell you this, that this is not like an arrest that happens in a crime committed. This is an arrest to effect his production in the Supreme Court of India on the uh, uh, order date. That is something which needs to be ensured by the state police. His uh, whereabouts for the next three days, as long as he's in police custody, would not make a difference. But as I'm again emphasizing, I have not seen the order. It would be difficult for anybody, even for you, to comment, and we should not be commenting on this. Because this matter, first of all, okay. is sub judice before yes, and the I'm Supreme Court of India. I'm not discussing the merits of the case. I'm, I think what we really need to look at is, is the corporate political nexus, which is what we're here to talk about. But Dushan Dave, as a senior lawyer here but tonight, Nidhi, I, I Nidhi, just want to where, ask Mr. Where yes. is the political corporate I want, nexus? I talk about that. I just want to ask Mr. Dave. Acted in a fair manner. Uh, d Mr. Dave, do you believe the police has acted as fairly as it could have in Uttar Pradesh? And secondly, uh, you know, as a senior lawyer. Who do you think is? I mean, what do you think of the advice that Mr. Subrotha Roy has, has has really got to have to defy the Supreme Court summons to appear before it is really quite audacious. 
Well, Nidhi, I think <coughs> I must uh, confess that today is one of the few you know, days when I completely disagree with Mr. Gaurav Bhatia, for whom I, you know, I have great affection for. Having said that, let me say one thing, that Mr. Subrata Roy has been absconding from the police for the last 72 hours. It is therefore absolutely inconceivable that police should allow him to stay in his own house. It is absolutely necessary for everybody, including unfortunately for the CGM and the police to ensure that he remains in police custody, not in his own house, but in the police station. And that's where they can really ensure, because otherwise, you know, these 300 acres sprawling uh, uh, mention that, yes, he can disappear anywhere and it would be really travesty of justice. He is guilty of contempt in the face of the Supreme Court. He was ordered to remain present. He has chosen to stay away from the Supreme Court. And this is despite the fact that for two years, Supreme Court has given every conceivable opportunity to him to comply with the Supreme Court's orders. So there are series of contempts that he has committed. And I am really shocked and disgusted that the kind of legal advice that he has received, if he is not in wrong, he should have really appeared before the Supreme Court, explained that stand to the Supreme Court, and that should have been the advice of any lawyer worth his salt. And I am really surprised that people of Mr. Jeth Malani's eminence are really trying to shield this man uh, you know, away from the court as if he is above the court. Clearly, he has everybody in the country supporting him. The entire political class across political lines is with him. We have seen his friendship with everybody who counts in this country, whether a politician or a film star or a cricket star or even top journalist. It is therefore really shocking that what is happening is really in the face of the Supreme Court. Nobody has respect for Supreme Court. And I personally feel that Supreme Court should really come down very heavily because in last few decades, there is a trend amongst people, rich and powerful, to take the legal system for granted. And therefore, you believe that, in a, in a sense, that, that, that there is a certain audacity that is being shown here because he felt that he could get away with it. Gaurav, I'll take that back to you briefly. Uh, you're a lawyer too, Gaurav. And therefore, as Mr. Dave said, who's advising him? Is, is it because he has felt all these years that he could get away with it, he could evade the law, and that he felt he could do it with the Supreme Court as well and not appear before them when a summons was issued? He could have just appeared and it would all have been over. And, and should he, he, should he not spend to, the, those, those days in to, police custody uh, with the police, not in, not in his estate, as Mr. Dave says? No, Nidhi, that's why, let me just say this, that uh, nobody can take the orders of the apex court lightly. And uh, when Mr. Dushan Dave says that, you know, these orders should be strictly implemented and he should have appeared before the Supreme Court, there cannot be any doubt in anyone's mind that yes, if somebody is asked to appear before the Honorable Supreme Court or even the Honorable High Court, the person is supposed to appear. I cannot speak on behalf of uh, the uh, uh, contemner or the legal advice that he got. I am here for a specific purpose because you were saying that uh, this person enjoys political connections. I am just trying to state that the state government is duty bound to deliver and they acted as per the law of the country and they did the needful to ensure that he is produced before the magistrate. Now, what happens from here again? We, we cannot start contemplating without seeing the order of the magistrate. If the magistrate is specified in his order, then that needs to be complied with. The state government has to do it. There is no choice but to okay. abide by the order okay, let me and we will ensure it in. is done. Okay, Medha Patkar, in a sense, many would say that, you know, Subrata Roy has spent all these years uh, trying to evade the inevitable and that you know th this this was bound to happen what would you say uh, to, to, to these developments today you see it's very shocking and painful that uh, such a high profile corporate uh, leader also acts in such a manner that it is proved that they are not law abiding citizens or corporations and that is what the people should know. When we question such kind of corporates, which their illegalities and irregularities, we do it because they are not treated as arm admi, but they are treated as khas admis. And that's because of the political support. Sahara is everywhere from media to cricket. 
and it really has developed uh, and occupied a space in the people's psyche, no doubt about it. But that kind of service doesn't, uh, you know, exclude them from the legal framework. So it is very necessary to see how they are dealt with. As against we, the non-violent activists, when we were, I was arrested in the high court premises in UP, when I was just going to meet Bhaugunaji, Ji, even after I was relieved, by the first arrest spot at the 4 o'clock in the morning from a bus going to Haridwar. And then second time in Chindwada at 10 o'clock at night, I was thrown into jail along with 20 other farmers. So this happens in our case, but not in the case of corporates, because as Neera Radia tapes also had proved, that somewhere they have the politicians in their pocket. And this is what is costing the state exchequer crores of rupees and not only the state exchequer but also the investors who are not so common people and yet these three crore investors also you know are cheated and so the courts orders the content of court etc while sometimes the orders are passed against us for one small not even mistake but misunderstanding created in the minds of the court I think in this case the corporates must be taught a lesson because even CII or FICI, these kinds of institutions or uh, you know the uh, federations are not taking the due cognizance of what is happening in the corporate world. We are not against all of them, but when they are doing something illegal or unconstitutional, they must be punished. They must be punished. You know, Chetan Bhagat today. Ambani or Adani's. Yeah, Ch Chetan Bhagat today. There is but a lot. But you know, uh, Nidhi. Yes, yes. Nidhi, just Bhakar. one point. Yeah. That we must ensure and check whether this particular corporate is acted against only because now he is with a party which is a part of the third force and not the Congress NCP Bhajapa Alliance. So I think uh, that wheels. also needs to be looked into. When who is acted against? is also a political decision. Otherwise, the law would take course against all of them who are doing something illegal and unconstitutional against the taxpayers. But you know the fact is, and I'll take this question to, the to, to Chetan Bhagat as well, that today more and more people, Chetan, are asking questions about the nexus between big corporations and politicians. It's something that didn't used to happen many years ago. In a sense, you can uh, credit Arvind Kejriwal for bringing up these questions in a big way. But it is out there. The conversation is out there. So is something changing? Is something changing? Are people demanding more accountability? Yeah, you know, I mean, firstly, uh, Didi, just today is what is happening. What I understand is this guy, uh, this person missed court summons, that too of the Supreme Court, and um, which was I don't. Nobody, I think, uh, says that it was a, it was a smart idea. I think you should never miss court summons. Most ordinary people in this country, if they get Supreme Court summons, they will show up. So I don't know what transpired and why he felt that he shouldn't show up and now the court uh, took harsh action against him. But frankly that is not the main case like Mr. Bhatia was saying. The case is much bigger re regarding to irregularities in the Sahara group which is a far bigger case which is being tried in courts. But there is the fact that there is a nexus and that is typified by groups like Sahara. I don't know whether the nexus is good or bad I think but this sector for example is a highly regulated sector so you have to and also it's a sector which touches millions of people and somehow always Sahara Group's disclosures have been uh, very weak and that has been an issue whether it's a crime or not that's a separate but ethically those politicians haven't really told Sahara that you need to disclose more and most most businesses in India work like this Sahara the chairman, the company is more flamboyant about it. They are actually seen as hanging out with the politicians, with film stars. I think they do it because it, at some level it inspires confidence. They are not a bank, commercial bank as such, but it inspires confidence in their customers who feel this guy I'm giving money to is very big, he's connected. So I think right from there the problem begins, even though there is nothing criminal about it, but the fact that he's seen with all the big politicians. So it is creating a confidence in people that this guy can do no wrong. And later on, they discover there are financial irregularities, and then, you know, it it all becomes very fuzzy yes, there. there are serious now, question. yes, serious there is a little more accountability. Said. Just, yeah, yeah. I'll just very quickly finish. Uh, there is a little more accountability. At the same time, you know, we cannot pass judgments on things that are subjudice. I'm not. I don't care. I've never known anybody in the Sahara Group, uh, and I don't think I have any remote connection to them. But we can't just generally say people should be punished. You know. 
it's, it's the court will decide whether they should be punished or not. What needs to happen is a proper court process. Uh, there is a SEBI. I don't know why Sahara was kept away from SEBI for so long. All those things have started happening. And I think slowly it's catching up on him. And even the politicians are realizing that it's becoming difficult because these things are important. We right. cannot. I'm just going to take the next question system. to Shailendra Singh. System. That Shailendra Singh, you know, in a sense, many would say, like the Supreme Court said, we have very long arms. And have those arms now caught up? Uh, with, with Mr. Subrotha Roy, why are there so many questions that have dogged Sahara over the, all these years about its finances, about <coughs> disclosures, about where all that money comes from? Why has there always been this question mark about the Sahara group? Well, I think, uh, you know, I, I'll just speak as a, as a professional who's, uh, you know, in the Sahara group for now nearly a decade and a half. And we have a, we've had a very, very professional and a very ethical relationship and totally enjoyed the experience, to be honest. Uh, but I think on a larger point that you were mentioning, and I, I, I wouldn't take uh, sort of sides or, or take judgments because I'm not qualified to do so, uh, like the other panelists. Uh, but I would certainly say that our country obviously has an issue with governance because uh, I, I, it's not that Sahara was, you know, has just actively done this for the last five years or four years. They've been in business for a really long time. And they've been in the media space, they've been doing business. And I think that if, if this issue had to get to such an escalated level, I think there could have been systems to stop this from happening. I mean, you know, Sahara is a really large organization and there are a huge amount of people associated with the organization on their payrolls as well as uh, connected with the group. And that is pretty evident from the ad today in the morning where you read that you know millions of people are associated with the group. So I possibly there can be laws in the future where you actually stop this from happening right at the uh, initial stages. Having said that, all I can say is that our experience as a professional organization, we've seen Mr. Roy and his organization very ethical. Even when he bought the Indian cricket team sponsorship, I was there personally with him at breakfast table. He only bought it for emotional reasons and he did not want a multinational brand on the chest of a national team. He did not buy it for commercial reasons. So all along I've seen him being a very, very strong patriot and also very passionate about the country and, and, and its well-being. So, I mean, no comments on the business and, the, and I, not, nobody is about the law. But in but all honesty, he, I mean, you know, just like, just, Nidhi, Nidhi, Court. just why a short point, I mean, just a I, short I, point, Nidhi. Mr. Singh, I'll just give this you another example. No, one second. When, when you say that, yeah. uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure he's a patriot and all of that, uh, all the things yeah. you said. But no, one, he, he doesn't appear before that, the Supreme yeah. Court. He doesn't appear this before the Supreme Court when he's summoned days before that. He's seen at a wedding. There are pictures of that published in the newspapers. But also, the day that the Supreme Court announced that there was going to be an arrest warrant and you had those headlines in the papers the next day, there were ads that the Sahara group took out that were published by various papers yeah. where they sort of gave gave their side of the story saying that we are the Sahara India Parivar, that you yeah. know they talked about his mother's illness and, uh, and her, his, her son's duty True. to be with the mother and so on. Despite the Supreme Court having rebuked him in the past for taking yeah. out those ads against the <coughs> uh, chief, that, that had happened before. So there's a certain audaciousness that people talk about, about Subroto Roy, I, that he thinks he can I just think, do it. Yeah. He can take out those ads despite what the top court has said in the past and he cannot appear because because he doesn't want to. I think you can take it in two perspectives, to be honest. And, and, and you're right in what you're saying. And I repeat again, nobody's about the law. But if you see the entire tone of communication of Mr. Roy on this case, he's always been extraordinarily emotional. For, for some reason or the other, he's actually pouring his heart out. Even the ad today mentioned it. So I think somewhere his emotions got the better of him on this judgment, to be honest. He's never broken the law. He's not an habitual offender. So I guess, you know, somebody like said on the panel before, uh, you know, the people advising him, obviously, didn't do a good job. But just to say about governance and about issues of the law, a very important point. Remember BCCI itself. I mean, we have seen the inconsistencies in BCCI, but at the end of the day, we let it go. We let it go. You know, no issues of conflict interest, no issues, no problem. Till the bubble doesn't I'm burst, to, none Singh, of us wake up. Before I come to Dushan Dave and Sharad Pradhan Nidhi, again, I'm going Nidhi, to quote to you a Reuters profile of Mr. Subroto Roy that was done, I, I think, a couple of years ago. And they said, that several bankers at global institutions told them that they would not want to work with Sahara given concerns about governance and transparency, that their business model is not transparent, they have a lot of cash but we don't know where it's coming from. This is the reputation that Sahara Absolutely. has and that is the question mark that is there on the company which I asked you about originally. Is that a question to me? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, uh, <coughs> 
Is it me? Yes, I mean, uh, me? yeah, like I said to you, that yeah, it's yeah. been about you know a decade and a half of experience, and all that we did was you know like many other agencies, we were one of the agencies, and we really, to be honest, we had a very above the board experience, and that's the reason I'm sitting here to just say okay. that our experience was above the board. But I can't take you know any any sides or, or guarantee anybody's code okay. of conduct because okay. we Shar don't know Sharad the businesses. Wants to come in here, then I come can to I just Sharad come in Pradhan. for a minute? I yeah, just yeah, got it. One second, now, Sharad Pradhan, yeah. he was very emotional. It is a very emotional reaction that we have seen from the Sahara boss is what Mr. Shailendra Singh is saying. I really have no words to that. I will let well, you take over. Well, uh, Nidhi, since Mr. Shailendra Singh has a business relationship with him, I would not like to comment. But I think he seems to be under awe of Mr. Sahara's over display of patriotism, which, which I look at with suspicion. Because anything over displayed should be looked at with suspicion and particularly you know his attitude in in displaying his patriotism makes others feel as if they are all traitors there's overdose of patriotism he, he the kind of well let's not go into those things we know that mr mr subrato roy is known for violating the law and not caring two hoots about anybody, whether it is the legislature, the executive or the judiciary. He has corrupt politicians, corrupt bureaucrats on his payrolls. He is capable, he considers, it is thanks to the Supreme Court of India, to a, to a very, very uh, revered bench of the Supreme Court, which has brought him to the ground. Otherwise, Mr. Subrata Roy is capable of buying off anyone, he is capable of keeping, caring two hoots for anybody on this earth. For him, he, he believes in creating his own law. He is a kind of, he is known to be a kind of, a, 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 he has so much of megalomania. Arrogance, the arrogance of wealth, mostly ill-gotten. As oh, somebody has rightly pointed out, nobody knows you, where Mr. he gets Pradhan, the money from. Shale, and mind you, the, the, those one, one more thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Shalendra Singh wants to Just respond. one more thing. Yeah, yeah. Most of the yeah. money... Most of the no, money I, that he gets, his main earning is from the chit fund, in which lies all the racket. The, all, most of his money comes from very, very poor people who do not have the courage or the means or the ability to question where their money has gone. If their money doesn't come back to them, okay, they have Mr. no Singh, say. Nobody I, listens Mr. to Mr. them. Mr. Singh, you've heard some very strong words. I know you want media. to refute that. Yes, before I come to Mr. Davi. Yes, Mr. Singh. Yeah, I, 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 just, I just think that we take we take a lot of liberty when we are on television. I think Mr. Pradhan is pr pretty much, uh, you know, uh, 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 sort of passed the judgment of on Mr. Sahara being corrupt and whatever, whatever. I'm I think you know. I, 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 I guess I, you know more this than all of us in the panel, about him. and I, you're you're surely allowed to have an opinion. But I, I must say on the other side that having having a professional experience, and I'm sure there are many other professionals in the country who work with the group, and we really have had a you know, really about the board experience, but I guess you know a lot, and I'm sure the law can really, uh, you know, you, you can help the law t take a good course because you seem to have information that, you know, can be really helpful to them. Dushan Dave, you wanted to come in, yes. Nidhi, a couple of things. First and foremost, SEBI's investigation has really put serious question mark on the business model of Sahara. Secondly, Nobody really knows who these depositors are. We are talking about some 20,000 crore plus, you know, rupees. And nobody knows who has deposited them. Nobody knows to whom it is to be refunded, whether it is capable of being refunded, whether it is actually refunded as claimed by Sahara. Supreme Court has expressed serious doubts about Sahara's claims on this point. So therefore the controversy so far as this issue is concerned is now beyond any, you know, doubt that there is a serious fraud here which is being alleged against them. The burden was on Sahara and Sahara has failed to discharge that burden. But having said that, let me say two things. One, that Mr. Subrata Roy's patriotism frankly appears to most of us common citizens as some kind of showmanship and not real patriotism. Secondly, the UP government has completely exposed itself as being totally helpless. As Medha Patkar rightly says, a common citizen would have been picked up in a matter of hours. That's but right. Mr. Sahara is somehow not available to the UP police. Maybe he is hobnobbing with top UP politicians at that time for 72 hours, Nidhi, which I is a disgrace. And if, this is, and if this is the level of approach of the UP government to Supreme Court, 
then you can imagine how they take the subordinate judiciary and high court you know into account they don't care at that point what the like to say but he wants to respond and then i'll get comments from medha and chetan yes 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 gorov yeah i have immense respect for mr dushan the way but i just disagree with the language and the motive that he is attributing to the state government because as i earlier pointed out also it was the state government the moment they got the copy of the order they were there to look for uh, subroto roy and after that also he was being escorted to the magistrate court just like any other ordinary citizen so i don't know on what basis is he making these allegations against the state government the state government has been acting in a very fair and transparent Audi. manner he drove and his Audi just A6. because yeah well, i i have to say i know no, i i think how did he look go at, to the court look at the audi no he didn't in fact you <laughs> missed out on that visual nidhi he was he was sitting in a police car on i noticed out. that even on your channel no. on the way out you on the way you didn't notice it i noticed it no i please you can you can uh, you can replay your program and you will notice he is being escorted by policemen he is in a police car before he is uh, being produced before spend, the magistrate he may still spend these days in custody at home last quick comments medha patkar to you first medha patkar what does this I story the, what the, is the lesson well, from this story is that's the question yeah the question is not only about the arrest and the events of the day or last uh, few days or months the question is uh, that their patriotism is somewhere supported by the patriarchal <laughs> attitude of the parties and each of the parties have their own pet companies if adani is with modi then ambani's are with congress and samajwadi and they also shift over when they feel that now the new prime minister is likely to be this 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 person they shift over and that is the uh, you know contention by many so it is very necessary to see how the vulgar profiteering by these companies and uh, not taking cognizance of even the monitoring agencies within is really allowing them to escape the legal framework and allegations and cases so that needs to be strengthened that is why we want jana lokpal we want an act which will take care of local issues local level corruptions and cheating to the top level and so that all thing is avoided by the parties as they presented themselves and showed exhibited when arvin kejriwal was not allowed to speak even being a chief minister well, well i think so it's, it's important that these issues that the are at least being talked about must like break i said this nexus. like i said chetan bhagat the, we didn't talk me? about this at one point i'll let you wrap this up for us at least we're talking about these issues today things are coming out well it is but i i must tell whether he was patriotic or not whether he was humble or arrogant it doesn't matter the issue is this when there is a nexus even in court you will find it very very difficult to prove criminality here try to understand criminality will be very hard to prove because the regulations say he can do what he is doing the regulations say you can collect money from people say i am investing it and if they lose the money well too bad you took the risk when people invest in sahara what risk are they taking what is the entity they are lending to and if that entity defaults or whatever mr roy could wash his hands off and say you know the the investments thing make a return it's your loss you were the investors i was just investing sorry bad idea and you the courts can do nothing in that case please understand it's the politicians who are supposed to protect these small customers but they may have been protecting the industrialists instead i'm not talking of this case it is not about arrogance it's not about this it is some of these regulations are not designed to help people no bank in this country can function without well, excessive disclosures you know, they have to have capital they have to up, but have in to this say, sector the supreme such court a certainly isn't in a mood to take this issue lightly you can see that the court is very very angry about the way things have played out so which well, way this case great. goes now is is really anyone's guess but uh, clearly Welcome important back. issues have been raised there with the arrest of mr roy that has happened he's going to be appearing in the supreme court on the on the 4th of march i'd like to thank all of you for joining us on the program tonight on this developing story we'll take a break and we'll also take a breather and completely shift gears after that chetan bhagat will stay with us because he's going to talk to us about the film adaptation of his novel two states